Good morning. Pastor Jeff here. This is our daily lectionary readings for Friday, May 31st, 2024. We've made it to the end of May. <laughs> Psalm 39, sorry, Psalm 139, 1 through 6 and 13 through 18 is our psalm reading. 1 Samuel 1, 19 through 27 is our Old Testament reading. And Romans 8, 31 through 39 is our New Testament reading. It is Friday, so we're looking ahead to what's going to be happening at church on Sunday. The scripture is going to come out of the Living Bible. Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know, when I sit or stand, when far away, or you know every thought. You chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment you know where I'm at. You know where I'm going to say before I even say it. You both proceed and follow me and place your hand on blessing on my head. This is too glorious, too wonderful to believe. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous, and how well I know it. You were there while I was being formed in the utter seclusions. You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. How precious it is, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. I can't even count. How many times a day your thoughts turn towards me. When I waken in the morning, you are still thinking of me. Our Old Testament reading, remember, is a continuous reading. So we're in 1 Samuel 1, 19-27. The entire family was up early the next morning and went to the tabernacle to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Ramah. And when Elkanah slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her petition. In the process of time, a baby was born to her. She named him Samuel, meaning asked of God. Because, as she said, I asked the Lord for him. The next year, Elkanah and Peninnah and her children went on the annual trip to the tabernacle without Hannah. For she told her husband, Wait until the baby is weaned, and then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there. Well, whatever you think best, Elkanah said, may the Lord's will be done. So she stayed home until the baby was weaned. Then though he was still so small, they took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh, along with a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice, in a bushel of flour and some wine. After the sacrifice, they took the child to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked him. I am the woman who stood there with time, praying to the Lord. I asked him to give me this child, and he has given me my request. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What can we ever say to such wonderful things as these? If God is on our side, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but also gave him up for us, won't he also surely give us everything else? Who dares accuse us, whom God has chosen for his own? Will God? No. He is the one who has forgiven us and given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? Will Christ? No, for he is the one who died for us and came back to life again for us and is sitting at the place of highest honor next to God, pleading for us there in heaven. Who then can even keep Christ's love from us? When we have trouble or calamity, when we are hunted down or destroyed, it is because he doesn't love us anymore. And if we are hungry or penniless or in danger or threatened with death, has God deserted us? No, 
For the scripture tells us that for this sake we must be ready to face death at every moment of the day. We are like sheep waiting for slaughter. But despite all of this, overwhelmingly, victory is ours through Christ, who loved us enough to die for us. For I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love. Death can't, and life can't. The angels won't, and all the powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. Our fear for today, our worries about tomorrow, or where we are, high above the sky, or in the deepest ocean, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ when he died for us. And here ends our readings for the day.